going on guys, Pat in the shop, and tonight we're talking EFI versus carburetor. I did some dyno testing uh, to compare the results between a couple different size carburetors and a throttle body injection. Um, there seems to be no bigger argument uh, in the hot rod world, maybe other than cam specs and what brand you like, but when it comes to induction, there's a big line drawn in the sand between the carb guys and the fuel injection guys. And, and some guys, even the fuel injection guys, don't even consider these throttle body injections as fuel injection. They they say only multi-port LS style stuff is real fuel injection. Uh, but to me, when you're looking at something like this, this is fuel injection. Um, I am not a carb guy, but I'm not a fuel injection guy. I should say I'm both. I like I like carburetors. I like the simplicity of carburetors. I like uh, the clean look of carburetors. There's no wiring. The cost effectiveness of carburetors and the overall performance of carburetors can be quite good. But on the other hand, fuel injection. I have to say I've done quite a few quite a few fuel injection systems now. Uh, all different brands. Uh, snipers are my favorite. Do they have downfalls? Sure. Um, there, but I have to say, I have had no customers complain about drivability. They've always said drivability is better, um, th throttle response is better. Uh, a lot of guys um, claim that performance is better, and that's what this video is about. I did some dyno testing, really comparing, um, you know, a 750 carburetor and 850 carburetor, and this X Flow uh, Sniper fuel injection. And then, if you think when we're injecting fuel in the same place versus a multi-port where we know that the fuel at the carburetor has a lot of time to pull heat out of the, the intake versus multi-port. And that's why oftentimes carburetors will make more power than a multi-port injection. But when you think about throttle body injection, when it's mounted up high in a perfect world, it should really beat or match at least a carburetor uh, because it has that same time to pull the heat out of the manifold with the with the flow of fuel going through, uh, just like a carburetor. But I have to say, when I dyno test them, there's something that I can never match to a carburetor. Maybe it's just me. Let's take a look. All right, first on the list are 750 carburetor versus the X Flow. Um, this was done on our small block Chevy 355, approximately 480 horsepower, 440 foot pounds of torque. We revved this thing out to about 66, 6700 RPM, and we were running this on a single plane intake with no spacer. Um, you're going to notice a trend though. So this is the, what I'm going to talk about when, I, when I'm showing you these graphs. So take a look at this, this comparison on this graph, and you're going to notice it's fairly close except the low end torque. And this is the problem I have, is I can't quite figure out why I can never usually meet or beat the low end torque with the sniper. If I'm commanding the same air fuel ratio as the carburetor, I've tried leaner, I've tried richer. Um, as long as the tune up is good on the carburetor, I can never seem to beat it with a sniper system. Uh, oftentimes I will see a higher peak number a slight higher peak number with the sniper depending on the airflow uh, and i'll sometimes see a, a a higher peak horsepower number but in this case you can see here uh, the 750 carburetor was working really well on this application on this single plane intake um, for whatever reason i find with dual plane intakes i can usually get better peak numbers with the sniper but in this case, on this single plane intake, uh, I could I got better average horsepower. It's very slight. You're talking within a couple of horsepower, if that. Uh, but it's always the low end torque, which always gets me. So so now let's pull up the 850 carburetor and tell me what you think of this. So there's our 850 carburetor comparison, and I want you to pay really close attention to this test. So the 750 test was about three or four poles averaged out between the sniper and the 750. Where this 850 test is just um, a, one pole with the sniper, one pole with the 850. But the reason why those two are matched up is because they're so close. Uh, they're the same timing. The, the coolant temperature was is within a few degrees. The air temperature was is with, within a few degrees. Um, the air fuel ratios are almost identical. So this comparison is the closest on paper back to back comparison I have between a Holly Sniper and uh, a carburetor. 
The throttle body sizing is close when you're looking at, at 900 CFM versus 800 CFM. Uh, but I'm going to tell you right now, here's the odd part. Even though the sniper is rated more, the, the 850 carburetor actually flows more air than the, the 900 CFM Holly sniper. I'm going to talk about that more in another video because it was kind of an interesting thing I figured out about how they maybe how they rate these uh, Holly snipers. But either way, when we look at it, it's again the same trend. The 850 carburetor makes that bump in torque and it actually a slight bump in horsepower on this test as well compared to the Holly Sniper. Uh, past, you know, 5,200 RPM or so, uh, it's very close. But again, under that, the carburetor uh, has an advantage. So I'm sure the carburetor guys are pretty happy with the result of those tests because the carburetor does have the advantage when it comes to power on the engine dyno. But what I wanna know from you guys, um, when you install, if you swapped from a carburetor uh, to fuel injection, did you notice that the car felt peppier down low? Uh, because a lot of the ones I've done, even with really well-tuned carburetors, because that's what we have to compare to, we can't compare a, a non-functioning or properly functioning carburetor to fuel injection to a new fuel injection system because it's going to feel like night and day. But if someone has a decently set up carburetor compared to fuel injection, did you find that the cars feel peppier? Because oftentimes, and a lot of my customers claim that the cars feel like they make more torque. But when we're seeing the results on the dyno, it's kind of contradicting that quite a bit. Um, so what what do you guys think? Have you done a back-to-back -back dyno test on a wheel dyno? Have you any of you guys done a back-to-back -back dyno or a track test? That would be an interesting test and maybe I'll have to do that or we can do a back-to-back -back, uh, you know, quarter mile run and actually see real world what is actually has the advantage because they're so close uh, when it comes to uh, making power on the dyno, but oftentimes that carburetor seems to be pulling ahead when it comes to low end torque, especially when we're dealing with similar sized carburetors. Again, if we can't compare it to a 600 carburetor versus a, you know, a 900 rated CFM throttle body, it's just not a fair comparison. But when we're comparing 750 or 850 carburetors to a throttle body, of 900 CFM or 800 CFM, then I think we're in that same realm and we can see that the power is very similar. Um, I wanna know what you guys think. I know there's a lot of guys that love carburetors and there's a lot of guys that love fuel injection, but I'm really curious, is there other guys out there like me that you know, don't have a real preference? It depends on the situation. Boosted stuff, I like fuel injection. NA stuff, I could go either way with it. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you surprised by the results? have you is it me am i is there some sort of magic that i'm not figuring out and trying to make these things work yes they're laptop tuned i've tried all different air fuel ratio commands but i seem to always fall short in the low end torque don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button i appreciate you guys coming and check out my channel see you next time